Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a wraparound pot holder. On the front of the oven mitt part, you can use just plain fabric. You don't have to put this apple on there. If you are interested in putting the apple applique on there, click on the link in the upper right hand corner or put any applique pattern that you like on there. So let's get started. The size of this wraparound pot holder is seven and a half inches wide by anywhere from 30 inches to 35 inches. And what I mean by that is the length may vary from user to user. For instance, I went and got the biggest pot we had to see how long mine needed to be and I could get away with just 30 inches. But if you work with a lot of really large pots, you might want to make it longer. As far as fabric, you'll need two seven and a half inch by, remember, either 30 inch to 35 inches long, four that are seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches. Binding, you'll need two strips that are two and three quarter inches wide, by 42 inches, two more that are two and a quarter inches wide by seven and a half inches. Cotton batting, you'll need two that are seven and a half by 30 inches again to 35 inches, whichever length you want to make it, or use one layer of cotton batting and one insole bright, which is a synthetic fabric that helps to block the heat. You'll also need two more pieces of cotton batting that are seven and a half by seven and a half inches. The red checked fabric here is for the very front and then the red with the white polka dots is for the back. Now I have my fabrics folded with selvage edges together and I've stacked them because I want to cut both pieces out at the same time. So line up the folded edge of your fabrics on one of the lines on your cutting mat and pull the raw edges here past a line on your cutting mat. Line up your ruler on the line on the cutting mat and we're going to trim the edge straight over here. Now don't move your fabric. Let me cut this a little bit more. Don't move your fabric. Move your ruler over seven and a half inches. Line it all up and cut. Unfold both pieces and lay them on top of each other. Pull the selvage ends down here past the first line on your cutting mat and you're going to trim off those selvage edges. So place your ruler on that first line and then cut. Don't move your fabric. Move your ruler over and cut. To cut out the squares you need for the very front of the wraparound pot holder, again leave your fabric folded in half. Straighten out your raw edge over here. And then you're going to go over seven and a half inches and cut a strip. Cut your selvage edges off. and then go over every seven and a half inches and you're going to cut and then you go over seven and a half inches again and do your last cut and then you have the squares you need for that section so when you go to cut out your cotton batting Always leave your fabric folded and you can cut out all your pieces much quicker that way.
If you've never cut out your binding strips before, I'm going to go over that quickly. Leave your fabric folded with the selvage edges together. Then pull this end past a line on your cutting mat because you always want to start with a nice straight edge. And you're going to cut from the fold line towards the selvage edge. So first cut this, I mean, excuse me, cut this end off. Line up your ruler. And now you don't move your fabric, you just move your ruler. So I'm going over two and three quarter inches. I'm cutting this binding wide because we have a lot of layers to go through. So you want to make sure your binding is wide enough. And cut. And again, don't move your fabric. You would keep moving over every two and three quarter inches to cut out your strips. Then stack your strips with all the selvage ends together and you need to cut those off because we don't need them on there. Now it's time to layer all of the fabrics together. So take your fabric for the wraparound portion and put whatever fabric you want on the back back side down. Then your two cotton batting layers or if you're using Inselbright one cotton batting and one insole bright, then whatever fabric you want on the top. Then place straight pins all over it to hold all of the layers together. And then I'm going to give you some suggested quilting stitches that you can do to hold it all together. You can either do straight line pattern like this, and you do them maybe every couple of inches apart. So you would first go uh, one top to bottom, and then go side to side, all right? Or you can use the diagonal pattern, which, by the way, has always been my favorite. And if you have a serpentine stitch, a lot of you do, you have got this stitch on your machine, then you can do this, and you just do the same pattern, either this one or on the diagonal. I'm going to do the diagonal because it's my favorite. Now, on your front section, if you're using just plain fabric, you're not using any kind of applique pattern on it, then uh, you would just do the same quilting stitches. But if you're using an applique pattern like I am on this, you would just layer everything together and then use whatever uh, background color is and use that for your thread and stitch just on the outside edge of whatever applique pattern you are using and that will hold everything together. If you have a walking foot, I highly recommend you use it because it helps to prevent the layers of fabric from shifting apart. So this is what it looks like. Now if you don't have one and you want to get one, you can go to a sewing machine supply store where they sell sewing machines. They might be able to order one for you or you can go on Amazon.com and you can probably find it there Take your two and one quarter inch strip by seven and a half and fold it in half and press. Then place it on the edge up here and stitch a quarter of an inch seam all along here. Then with your iron, press this. Fold the binding over to the back side and make sure you pull this folded edge past your stitch line. And then after you've got it pinned all the way across, then turn it over to the front and then you're going to do stitch in the ditch. And you're going to stitch on the background fabric here, not on the binding, but you're going to stitch right next to it and stitch right in that ditch all the way across. On the two lower corners, you're going to trim some of the corners off. So place the edge of your ruler on this side and put the two inch on this side and make sure the one is pointing right into the corner. And then trim. And you do this on both corners. Place the top piece of the oven mitt at each end. Then place a pin on each side and you're going to now cut 
this section off on the wraparound portion. So go ahead and line up your ruler and trim and then go to the other side and trim. And remember you do this at both ends. Stitch the ends of your strips together one quarter inch seam. Press the seam open and then fold your strip in half and fold it the complete length all the way down. Place the end of the binding somewhere in the middle on one side. Then go over about four inches and place your first pin and pin all the way down to here. Now when you get to the first little corner here, put a pin right in that corner and then pull the binding like this and place another pin right into that corner. Now you're going to get a little fold here and that's normal. I'll show you later how to cut this so that it'll lay really flat. So then you would continue pinning around all of your sides and pin your corners like that. As you're pinning and you're coming around to where you first started pinning, you want to take the two ends of your binding and overlap them. And then you're going to cut a half inch overlap. So you're cutting this end a half inch longer than this one here. And I know how big a half inch is, but if you're not sure, just measure. Then unfold these two ends. Let me see if I can get them unfolded. Okay, here we go. Here's one. And now unfolding the other. All right, now fold your wraparound pot holder. Bring these two ends together. And stitch a quarter inch seam and I would pin these together. Stitch a quarter inch seam, finger press your seam open and then fold it back, pin it down and now stitch three eighths of an inch all the way around. After you have stitched the binding down then go to those corners and clip this part of the binding that point your scissors right into that corner and clip. Now be careful you don't cut into your stitches and do it over here and you'll find that it'll prevent your edges from curling up. To help the binding fold over easily to the back side I like to go to my ironing board and then just push and press the binding away from the center. Turn it over to the back side facing up and pull your binding over the edge. You want to pull the folded edge of the binding past the stitch line here. So you fold it over and then go ahead and pin it. Now let me show you how to do your corners. You'll notice that you have these little bumps here. They're real easy to take care of. You just press down with a pin where that bump is, fold it over, and then pin it to where you have just a tiny little tuck. And you would do that at all of them. Turn it over to the front side and you're going to do stitch in the ditch. And this stitches the other side of the binding down. So if your folded edge of your binding was not pulled past this stitch line, this next step is not going to work, so make sure you did that. Put your needle down right in the ditch. That's the seam right here. Don't stitch on top of the binding, but right next to it. So you're just going to stitch down all the way around. For more potholder projects or oven mitt projects, play this video to the very end where you will see a green screen appear and then click on any of those links. If you like this video, please click on thumbs up and also 
click on share to share this video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed yet then click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen click on that little bell and then enter your email address so that you'll receive future email notifications about my latest video if you don't seem to be receiving those notifications go to your cell phone click on settings and set notifications in the on position I'm Cheryl this is Manny thanks again for coming by see you next time happy sewing